This is going to be the commercial membrane replacement video. Depending on what size system you have, depends on what size membrane you'll have. Um, but if you're dealing with these PVC champ housings, the procedure is going to be pretty much the same, just be larger scale or maybe even smaller scale. Um, the first and foremost thing you want to do is shut off the water, which I've already shut off the water. Um, the other thing that you can do if you want to ensure that there's no pressure on the system is open up the solenoid valve on the side of the solenoid and just make sure everything is released. Now, on the front of the system, you can check your gauges too and make sure they've all went over to zero. Um, once that's been done, then we can start to actually take the, the caps off of these. Um, I'm just going to pull one out today and show you how it goes in there and explain to you um, the proper way to install it. But before we do that, I want to talk about these arrows that you see on here. Um, these arrows are basically indicating the direction of the flow. Now, so for this particular membrane, we're feeding from the bottom and going out the top. Um, if you look at the bottom here, I don't know if you can see it, but this is directly off the pump. It's feeding in the bottom of this membrane and coming out and then the feed's coming across and feeding in it, this membrane and then going back down and then it's coming across and it's feeding into this membrane. So really water's flowing like this through these membranes. It's not flowing through all three at the same time and it's not flowing through, you know, all, all the same direction either. It's actually flowing in a zigzag pattern. Now with that being said, that means that the membranes have to be put in here a certain way depending on which way the flow is. Um, when I get the membrane out, I'll show you the, the, what differentiates each side of the membrane. There's something that's called a skirt seal that r literally looks like a woman's skirt that comes off the, the side of the membrane. That particular seal is what seals off the bad water and forces that bad water in through the membrane. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a membrane out and then I can kind of show that to you and, and make you un or help you understand why it needs to be the way it, it is. Um, this particular unit uses these John Guest speed fittings um, where you're just going to push in on the collet and hold in on it and then you can actually pull the lines right out. They also have these locking clips on here. Pop those off. Sit down here. Push in the collet. Work it out of there. It's a little tight on this one. I'm going to go ahead and take this tubing out of the way just so it's not in our way when we pull this one apart. Now, if you want to pull in close here, I'll show you how the snap ring and the keeper comes off. Behind here is this yellow keeper. We call it the pie or the, the pie shaped keeper. It's a Phillips head screw in here and you can take that Phillips head screw out and then this whole plastic pie shape keeper comes out. And then you can see there is a snap ring that goes in here, a white snap ring. What I like to do first is push down on this to make, it sh to make sure it's all the way down in there and then we can actually start to pop this snap ring out. Now you want to be careful because you can break this off if, if you don't have it somewhat loose. So what I always do is push down on that lid and then you can kind of get it loose that way and then walk it out of there. Now if this is really hard to get out of there, check and make sure you don't have pressure on this because there's a very good chance that you may have some pressure still there and that's why it's so difficult. Because if there is pressure there and you do happen to get it off, this may come out and become a projectile. So make sure the pressure's off of it. Now, once you have it out, sometimes you can get lucky and just grab it by the fitting and pull it right up. Most of the time you cannot. That's when I use my channel locks and you can actually use this as a crow's foot. Now, obviously this is all plastic so you can break this. So be careful, but you can help use it to give you some leverage and sometimes that leverage alone is enough to help you pop it up as you can see there. And actually this cap is going to bring the membrane up with it. 
because this cap should come off the membrane. See there's a, actually some grease there with the center O-ring and then the outer O-ring. And then we'll go ahead and pull this membrane up out of here. Okay. And now I want you to see this skirt seal. As you can see, it kind of flares out. So what happens then when water comes in here, it pushes that seal out and seals this outer band and it forces water to push through the membrane. Now, this is always gonna be on the feed side of the membrane housing. So again, if you look over here at the membrane housing, you can see the arrow pointing up. So that means it's being fed from the bottom. So that means this skirt seal should be at the bottom. Now, when you put these back in there, if you force it too fast, you can roll this seal out. So whenever I'm putting this one in, since I'm going against the seal, I try to do a little bit of a twist action to get it started and then continue to twist it as you let it down through there. What that'll do is that'll ensure that it's not rolling the seal. It'll get a little bit tougher too as you get to the bottom because there's a little bit of water in there that'll start forcing through the membrane. The fact that that water forces through the membrane lets me know that that, that skirt seal is in the right position. So we're gonna do that until we get it pushed all the way down. And you're gonna fully seat it until it goes all the way down in there. And you actually see some air bubbling up there. And that's the air that we allowed in the membrane coming back out. Now once that's done, then we can put our cap back on. If if your cap's dry, go ahead and put some food grade silicone grease on both O-rings, this outer sealing O-ring and the inner permeate shaft O-ring. And then we can go ahead and put it back in place, make sure it fits on the center shaft and push it all the way down. And then I usually dry the water out of here just so you can see. Now we're gonna put the snap ring back in, putting the smaller end in first. Make sure it gets all the way in there. And actually it'll snap in there, as you can see. Um, you should have somewhat of a gap between here. If you don't, then it's probably not all the way in there. Um, if it's not all the way in there and you start the system, it, it will pop out of there and come out like a projectile. So once we've put it back in there, then we can put our pie shape piece back on. And then we'll put our screw in there that I dropped. Tighten it down. And then we'll install our tubing back in there, which is not always easy to get in. It's easier to take all three off at the same time, but for the purpose of this video, we did it one at a time here. Make sure your line's fully seated in. Go ahead and put our lock clips back in place. final piece back in. Now once this is done, you basically you would repeat that for each membrane and then you'll go through the complete startup process again. You're going to treat this as a new install and, and go completely through the startup process. But um, keep in mind, like I said, there's a proper way to put them membranes in. The skirt seals should always be on the 
feed side of the membrane housing. So the feed side being the, the bottom of the arrow. Feed down there, feed up here, feed down there. Again, this is the commercial membrane change for U.S. water systems. Thanks.